Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong and welcome to the second video in a series of discussions with Professor Luigi Fontana from the University of Sydney. Professor Fontana takes a holistic view of aging including diet, nutrition, exercise as well as brain health and social connections. The first video in this Path to Longevity series covered diet and nutrition, one of the key pillars of a healthy lifestyle. The topic of this second video is exercise. Professor Fontana explains the many benefits, not only for your body, but also for your brain and mood. He also discusses the importance of doing different kinds of exercise. We did have a technical glitch in the middle of the recording, so unfortunately you will see a break in the flow. If you do like the video, please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for notifications when a new video is released. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. Now, let me start the interview. So let's talk about exercise. Yes, that would be. Yeah. Um, so I know you, you studied the blue zones, right? And we, we, you looked at them. I, you mentioned in the book how they, they, so many centenarians and so they don't go to the gym, they don't go running. What they do mostly is a lot of uh, kind of low level activity throughout the day, kind of continuous. Um, so would you see that as kind of better than going to the gym or like doing the Pomodoro technique? If I do the Pomodoro at home, you know, like 25 minutes on, five minutes, is, is that five minutes exercise? Is, is that kind of better than sitting around all day and then going for a run or going to the gym in the evening? As you said, you know, you, you know, the, these these centenarians, they were doing a lot of exercise, you know, because back then there were no cars, you know, there were you know no tractors, nothing. So to go and get the water, to get everything, you know, they had to work many hours in the in the in the fields, you know. For example, the Sardinians, you know, they were walking long hours with the sheep, you know, in the mountains, you know. So it was probably seven, eight hours a day of, uh, of, uh, of physical activity uh, that, you know, luckily, you know, we, we don't have to do anymore because, you know, you know, it's, uh, I think, you know, it was quite a bit of physical activity. So we don't know how much exercise we need. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I tried to explain in my book was basically more than the epidemiological data that, as you know, they are just association data. You know, when you do epidemiology, you just associate something. So you measure how, you know, maybe people that say, you know, you ask, you know, how much exercise you do. And then, you know, you make a scale as a questionnaire. And then, you know, you look at, you know, the 10, 20 years down the road, you know, the incidence of cancer or cardiovascular disease, dementia, and then you make an association. So, you know, these people who did more, they had, they reported to do more exercise, they had less cancer. But it's imprecise. It's just, you know, what, what we call these that are suggesting. Mm. So, but, you know, we know by studies done by, by, by scientists, you know, physiologists, you know, that exercise, again, is super powerful in improving insulin sensitivity. Even my group, you know, we did, a, we did studies where, you know, we compare people doing calorie restriction with master athletes and insulin sensitivity was much better in, in, in athletes than in calorie restricted. Mm. So because insulin is one of these factors that is driving cancer and aging, I think, you know, to have exercise as one of the component of a healthy lifestyle is essential. You know, for example, for this reason, when you have lower insulin, and again, as I said, you know, exercise is super powerful, you are more insulin sensitive, and therefore you have less bioavailable sex hormones and uh, IGF-1, there are other factors promoting cancer and aging, and, that, and, and the reason is that, you know, insulin resistance is inhibiting the, pro the liver production of sterohormone binding globulin and IGF BP1 and PP2, who are transporters of these growth factors. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, in my book, I'm trying to explain, you know, in an easy way, 
why doing certain type of exercise are changing metabolic and hormonal and metabolic pathways that you know are important for aging and cancer and other chronic diseases so to answer to the, to your question i think you know that you know exercise is important again it's not the magic fix I see a lot of people who are obsessed, you know, like, you know, we have people obsessed with diets. So there are people who are obsessed with exercise. And so they think that, you know, because they exercise many, many hours, they run many kilometers per week, they are super healthy. They are not. You know, when we were studying people on a typical American diet in my lab in US, and we were putting them on a treadmill, you know, especially those who were eating unhealthy diets, they had, they had all sorts of arrhythmias and you know, high blood pressure because again, exercise is, not, is important, but it's not the solution. If you are eating unhealthy diets and, and so the building blocks of your body are unhealthy. So if you eat fast food and you exercise, do you think you know, you're gonna live longer? No, because you know, if, Basically, the building blocks, the type of amino acids, the type of fats, you know, trans fatty acids and other substances, you know, chemicals in your food are not good. Those are the building blocks of your cells. Exercise mm -hmm. is just a way, you know, to make the system. So basically, when you, when you exercise, one of the first things that happens, you increase mitochondrial biogenesis. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, you know, if you want to produce more energy, you need more mitochondria. And therefore, exercise is probably the stronger intervention to increase mitochondrial biogenesis. And therefore, it's very important to avoid weight loss, weight gain. Because, you know, the more mitochondria you have, the more fat and substrates you are burning when you are exercising to produce ATP energy for or moving the muscles, you know, more, more fast. And, 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 and therefore, you know, there is no doubt, you know, the exercise, endurance exercise is very important for preventing weight gain, is very important for insulin sensitivity, is very important for uh, reducing triglycerides and increase HDL cholesterol in combination with diet. In combination with that, is important to lower blood pressure. Even if you know we have data, we haven't we haven't published. You know, people who have been exercising on a high salt, high calorie diet, as they get older, the blood pressure goes up. Instead of people on calorie restriction, as they get older, their blood pressure remains very low. Right. So there are differences. There are differences, you know. And and again, in, if you know the mechanisms then of what is doing what, then you are able to use these instruments in a more precise and personalized way. Instead of, you know, following these uh, kind of fad diets or fad exercise, uh, you know, extreme obsessive type of interventions that a lot of people there are addicted, they are addicted, you know, to these extremes, you know, they become fanatic of running fanatic of bodybuilding, fanatic of in high interval uh, in in training without knowing what oh, exercise yeah. Yeah. is very important. Yeah. But it's not the solution. It's one of the instruments that we can use to improve health and to maximize health. But we know, we need to know what different type of exercise are doing. We have to know that excessive exercise is bad. You know, we know, you know, people who are over exercising apart from damaging their joints. A lot of the people, you know, that have been studying in St. Louis who were master athletes, you know, when they start to be 50, 60, they start to have, you know, cartilage issues first. And then eventually they have, you know, hip replacement, knee replacement, all sorts of problems and many of them they stop exercising because basically their joints are destroyed you know by excessive running especially in combination with unhealthy diets and we know from several studies you know that if you are overdoing exercise 
you are causing fibrosis of the heart. And if this fibrosis is, is hitting the, the conductive heart system, the electric system, you know, then you start to have arrhythmias. And that's what we were seeing in these people. Then, you know, where we were doing a stress test, a VO2 max on these people who, that we were studying. Mm. A lot of people in their 60s, 70s, they had all sorts of arrhythmias, you know, because for too many years, they had a over excessive catecholaminergic stress due to excessive exercise. So exercise is important without overdoing it. And again, you know, it's important because you increase mitoc my mitochondrial biogenesis. And so that's an important tool to uh, avoid the increase in, uh, in, 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 in abdominal fat as you age is important because you improve insulin sensitivity. That, as I said, is very important, you know, for the insulin angiofarentor pathway. And uh, for insulin sensitivity, is important for triglyceride lowering, for blood pressure lowering, for HDL cholesterol increase, and is important for memory. There are studies showing that you know people who are exercising constantly and regularly without over overdoing it, they when you exercise, for example, your muscle is producing a molecule called captepsin B. Mm -hmm. that uh, goes, you know, it travels through the bloodstream to the brain and it stimulates the production of BDNF. BDNF is the brain-derived neurotrophic factor that is very important for memory consolidation, for the growth of synapses, but also has a powerful antidepressant activity. Is as powerful as many antidepressants drugs that people are taking for depression. And, and then many other stuff, you know, exercise, improving endorphins and, and, and other molecules that are important for, for brain health and metabolic health. Um, and that's endurance. Then, you know, you have resistant exercise. You know, it's important, you know, to, to keep some good muscle mass. You know, you know, apart from doing endurance, you know, everybody should do some uh, resistance exercise. You can do resistant exercise at home. You know, there are some exercises you know you can do you know at, at home at work for example when i'm at work you know every two three hours you know I, I i i stand up and you know maybe i go for a walk or i do some ramp of stairs you know and uh, that's you know from studies you know if you do very fast you know two or three ramps of stairs you know that's good enough to activate your glute four and other mechanism you know as you know long long running and um, and I do some 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 you know pull ups and some exercise you know that you know I describe in my book you know where you know you can you, you can keep your muscle mass just by doing these two three times a, a, a day you know and it takes you know five minutes each you know is enough you know if you do constantly this one you, you keep a good muscle mass you know without without going to the gym and uh, and then the, the third component of exercise is flexibility and posture. A lot of people, they underestimate how important it is, you know, starting from since you are young, to do uh, flexibility and stretching exercise because a lot of back pains, neck pains, joint pains are due to a bad posture. So if you keep running or exercising on a bad posture, you are increasing damage you are increasing the, the, the consumption of, and the, uh, you are destroying the joints uh, and uh, the intervertebral discs. And um, a lot of people who are taking painkillers as they get older is because of years and years of malposture due to the lack of training uh, for exercise that keep uh, flexibility and posture and balance and they so that's a major problem that people they totally underestimate you know how important it is you know uh, so these are the three major and in the, in the book I, I I describe you know for example how you know some exercises are important for preventing for helping preventing uh, bone loss, you know, apart from muscle mass, you know, bone is also important. And, you know, some weight-bearing exercise are important for, 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 for bone 
uh, mass preservation. And um, yeah, so that's in, in summary, you know, why exercise is important. Right, yes. So uh, I guess a kind of a, a de detailed question. So have you looked at like high intensity training against kind of longer endurance training? And do you see a trade off? I mean, so like Tabata, do you see value in Tabata where you're actually doing short bursts at like 100%? And, and if you do that, does it mean you have to, you can get away with less uh, endurance training? Yeah, I, I didn't do this type of research myself, okay? I, I, never, I never did, you know, this type of research comparing different type of uh, uh, hit versus uh, endurance exercise, but, you know, I know enough. And uh, again, I think it's important to incorporate, you know, in our weekly routine, some uh, days where instead of doing, you know, long hour, like maybe an hour of uh, swimming or running or biking, you do this uh, high interval training uh, exercise for several reasons. One, you know, you are reducing the time, you know, instead of, you know, exercising for an hour, you know, you have the same metabolic molecular benefits in terms of VO2 max, GLUT4 and other mechanisms as long hours. But then also because if you want to improve your performance by doing high interval training, you are recruiting more fibers. So when some people, they, 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 despite exercising a lot, long hours, they don't get improvements, is because they keep using the same fibers. Mm. Instead of by doing this high interval training, you are recruiting more fibers and you exercise them and you increase the mitochondria and so you become more efficient. Indeed, when we do a view to max on bikers, you don't do a view to max on a treadmill because that's, you know, that's not the type of mass. If you want to really measure the VO2 max of a biker, the cyclist, you have to do the VO2 max on a bike. And if you want to do the VO2 max of a runner, you don't do it on the bike because the type of fibers they are recruiting when, they are, when you are running or biking are completely different. And that's why, you know, by using different type of exercise, you are recruiting different type of fibers in your muscles and you, you are building up mitochondria and GLUT4 in more fibers. And by using high interval training, you are recruiting even more fibers because when you are pushing to the max, then, you know, to do this max exercise, you know, you have to recruit lots of fibers simultaneously. So that's why I think, you know, incorporating high interval training like Tabata or other ones, maybe twice a week, you know, mm -hmm. I think is very good for, for, for improving skeletal muscle performance and activating these metabolic molecular pathways. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative and actionable. I very much like the detailed explanation of how exercise benefits the body and mind and the caution that you can do too much. We will be releasing the third part soon, which will be focused on mental well-being, so please stay tuned. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.